Experts say recycling could promote a cleaner environment here in Nairobi. This is in addition to various other social benefits, of course. However, this can only be achieved if there is a solid, a sound solid waste system, at least according to Green Africa Foundation. KTN's special correspondent, Alex Tamwada, takes a look at the opportunities in garbage. Many Kenyans, this is waste. The real meaning of waste. Things to be thrown away. But here, there is gold. There's gold in waste. There's a lot of gold in waste. Uh, other than plastic, there's also the biodegradable. I think this is something that uh, Kenyans need to start embracing uh, so that we can manage our waste a bit better. His background is public health and he has a PhD in project management. He quit his government job to begin something new. He saw gold in plastic waste. So he established this facility to turn that waste into something useful. Basically, we recycle waste plastic into building hardware and sell to developers, uh, both corporate and individual, uh, those that have challenges with high prices. We've come in with a new building, mat building material, which should be able to compete steel, timber, and clay. Dr. Agan, who has no background in engineering, says the machines here are locally made or call it Juakali type, but there are plans to improve on the technology by importing more efficient machines. The main product here are fencing posts. This project has saved a lot of trees. We've done like about 26,000 posts since inception, and uh, that has gone a long way in saving so many trees that would otherwise been used as fencing posts. You'd think this pole is steel. It is not. It is plastic, made out of recycled plastic material. Advantage, it cannot be easily vandalized. It cannot be eaten by termites, among other advantages. The poles are manufactured and supplied by Dr. Oscar Agan. The fencing post that is fast replacing steel on the roads has helped has saved the government a lot of what I call uh, overhead in terms of expenditure because of vandalism. Vandalism is very common along the highways and I'm glad that the Kenya Highway Authority has now shifted from steel to plastic posts. You need some skill to recycle it. It's not like metal that you'll come and sell in a scrapyard. This is a roofing tile out of waste plastic and sand and we can make them in different colors. The company has contributed a great deal to job creation. I do supply to Continental Renewable Energy Company, which is owned by Daktari. Right now, we are crushing HDP material, which we have collected from the dumping site. So should plastics be banned? That has been a critical question, but Dr. Agan's argument is that it is all about managing waste. This is a product from waste, other than it being a bother to them, they should manage it well. They should bring it to the relevant, or what you call, SMEs that use it to create employment for their children, for their youth. And also it's going to go a long way in reducing the cost of building, which is a nightmare in this country. However, the National Environment Management Authority maintains that plastics should be banned. You see, there are many forms of plastics, for example. I would like to be very specific on the flimsy bags, the ones that fly around, the ones that we are unable to control, the ones that when you go to the supermarket, you get them and in large numbers because they are free. What we would like to go, if you would like to make an impact, the impact has to be felt in the pocket. If people pay for plastics, they are going to be able to control plastics better. They are going to be able to manage plastic. They are going to use less. They are going to recycle them and they are going to find more value in plastics. Elsewhere at the Chandaria Industries, there is a different type of recycling. There, they turn this into useful products. For example, the tissue papers you use at home. We visited the recycling plant and this is what we found out. Chandaria Industries is billed as the largest paper recycler in East and Central Africa. Our raw material is actually the paper. It is, uh, you know, the most important raw material for, you know, for us. I mean, some people call it waste paper. We're trying not to call it waste paper. We're trying to call it paper now. Some people think, oh, I'll just burn this paper. 
I'm just going to dispose of it in the landfill sites, you know. But for us, it's, uh, you know, a, a source of national wealth. Tons and tons of that waste paper is turned into useful products with the plant operating 24 hours. We have uh, some collectors, you know, who collect uh, from different parts, uh, you know, of the city, from different parts of the country, and they bring it here to us. We also have a direct collection system. We know we have a we have a team that contacts companies, corporates, individuals, schools, you know, etc., and uh, we coordinate with them to pick up the waste and bring it back to our site also. Paper recycling can be a sure way of destroying confidential information. For example, information generated in banks. You have banking slips and bank statements, for instance. So, for example, where people have uh, client records, they have sensitive information which uh, you know they do not want to be uh, you know at risk for it being leaked to the public domain or you know getting into anybody else's hands you know they can come here and see it being destroyed in a matter of minutes the raw material is turned into pulp the paper you know is is, is brought it is then taken into what you if you would like to call it a big container mixed with water crushed goes through the process and then finally ends you know as uh, uh, the big rolls of tissue those big rolls of tissue are then taken to what we call the converting side, which is the finishing side. So those are then cut into toilet rolls, you know, they are processed into serviettes, kitchen towels, boxed facial tissues, you know, many, many products. Newspapers we don't use uh, that much, unfortunately, you know, newspapers because the ink content is very high. So what it does is, you know, it makes our water go black. Through paper recycling, Chandaria Industries has created both direct and indirect employment. Direct employment uh, on this site here alone is a thousand people and if you look at the employment being provided to the waste paper collectors, uh, you know, across only Kenya is over 20,000 Kenyans. Paper recycling is environment friendly as it reduces the cutting of trees which ordinarily are the source of raw material for making paper. Our business has helped uh, save the deforestation of over 20 million trees you know, in, in, in the years that we've been in existence. Ordinary people can make a contribution too, not to forget that waste paper can earn you some cash. Even for example, at your house you have uh, paper that you dispose every day. If you're just able to collect that for a week or a month and, you know, come together and bring it to our site or to a designated collection point, you know, we will take it away. One of the habits that must change for recycling in Kenya to grow is mixing of waste. It is recommended that separation should be done at the source. When it's white, for example, you know, without much contamination, we can, we can, we can you know, do a lot with it. But unfortunately, when you start adding uh, food waste, when you start adding other contaminants, it becomes a bit of a challenge. For KTN News, I'm Alex Tamwada.